Part 1. Language of the Mind Long before we became scientifically literate, humans could not account for natural events. Therefore, people would describe things based off of their frame of reference, which is supplemented by their understanding of reality. People would describe natural phenomena based off of whatever cultural frame of reference that the person is familiar with. Understanding this fact alone will help shed light on ancient myths and religious tales around the world. The people who write religious texts were describing situations and experiences in the only way they understood. In fact, if one takes the time to study all the religions of the world, one will see that the people who wrote these texts were also encoding information based off of natural events. For example, they would encode in numerical values that are related to the procession of the equinoxes. Another example of this cosmological coded language would be the sun rising against the backdrop of the constellation of the solar crux on December 25th. In other words, God's sun is placed on the cross. Once you wrap your head around all this, you should reconsider all spiritual and religious texts describing heaven or hell or any other extra-dimensional concept. The reason being is that science is now revealing the true nature of reality. Quantum physicists may not like talking about spirituality, but I believe it is important to pay attention to all perspectives before dismissing anything as a fallacy. The more sophisticated our technology becomes, the more we can perceive. With each advancement of the microscope, scientists are able to see deeper into the fundamentals of reality. From microscopic particles with the original microscope, to seeing subatomic particles with an electron microscope. With each successful advancement, we satisfy one question only to provoke ten more. The deeper we go into the fabric of reality, the more mysterious things become. Many theories have been made in an attempt to understand the nature of reality. Such theories include the Big Bang, String Theory, Quantum Entanglement, the Parallel Universe Theory, the Multiverse, and the Dark Matter Fractal Field. All these theories, when put into layman terms, are describing things that are strikingly similar to the descriptions of ancient spiritual cultures. For example, the concept that we are all one. Part 2. The Circled Dot This concept is generally the basis for all spiritual traditions, that we are all immortal entities inhabiting a human body. From a scientific point of view, the theory is that the entire universe originated from a single point, that all the matter that makes up everything, including all of us, came from that single point. The universe expanded, thus the Big Bang Theory. The implications of this theory is that we are the universe, experiencing itself subjectively through all manifestations of existence. This runs in direct parallel to the thinking of spiritual traditions mentioned previously. The fact that we are all one God, experiencing itself subjectively through the manifestations of all creation. I want to emphasize this point. All the ancient religions and spiritual traditions of the world were describing real phenomena based off of their cultural dialect. This perspective allows us to properly understand the philosophies and religions of all the peoples of the world. They were creating mythos from cosmology, attributing natural events to characters of stories. Many of these cultures who had no connections to one another, who existed in different time periods, all describe the same fundamental detail within their creation stories. The creator and the creation, represented by the circled dot. The center is the creator and the circle is the creation. Could the ancient peoples of the world have known about this Big Bang? The symbol of the circle dot can be interpreted in a variety of ways, each of which has its own significance that adds to the overall meaning. One could view it as an atom, a solar system, or even the Alpha and Omega. I will explain this in great detail in my ancient cosmology video. But for this video, I want to draw a comparison between the accounts of ancient spiritual myths to the revelations made by modern quantum physicists. They are both looking at the universe from different angles. Some quantum physicists believe that this universe is multidimensional. The more time goes on, the more they discover which contradicts previous theories. The idea of dark matter came to be when astrophysicists realized that there was something holding the galaxies together in interstellar space. The Big Bang in and of itself is a conundrum. The concept of the universe originating from a single point, to me, sounds like the effect of multidimensional causes. Let's take a look at the concept of dimensions. The first dimension is represented by a straight line. The second dimension is length and width, flatness. The third dimension, our dimension, is length, width, and height. 
all confined within the boundary of time. The past, present, and future are all simultaneously existing in the fourth dimension. From this perspective, the universe is constantly beginning and ending, for time is no longer linear. Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean absolutely flat, and that we live, appropriately enough, in a flat land. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his insides, a voice from within. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration, and so he descends to actually enter Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in Flatland only partially, only a plane, a cross-section through him can be seen. So, when the three-dimensional creature first reaches Flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen, and we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad. As the apple were to descend through, slither by Flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion and so makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above flatland. At first, the square has no idea of what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. But after a while, he comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in Flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing Flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was in some other mystic dimension called up. And they will pat him on his side and comfort him, or else they'll ask, well, show us, where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it, and the poor square will be unable to comply. Remember, every dimension is built upon the previous dimension before it. Two dimension cannot exist without one dimension. Three dimension cannot exist without two dimension. And four dimensions cannot exist without three dimensions, and so on. As we move toward the fifth dimension and beyond, reality becomes more and more complex, far beyond the current human understanding. Or is it? Part 3. Bandwidth of Perception Humans can only understand something if given proper context. Our society's separation from our roots has created a stigma towards any semblance of culture. We view these societies as primitive. Not only this, but we demonize acts of spiritual traditions, such as the consumption of psychedelics, which Aboriginal societies still do to this day. And our society's war on drugs has lumped all mind-altering plants within the same category as crack, meth, and heroin. Doing so, we've created a huge separation from ourselves and the keys to unlocking the truth about the nature of reality. To understand what I'm saying, we need to quickly remind ourselves of how the brain works. The brain is programmed to receive chemical signals and waves. This is how our senses function. Our eyes see light waves, which is a tiny fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum. Our ears pick up sound waves, our ability to smell, taste, and touch are all based on electrical signals interpreted by the brain, which is consisted of over 86 billion 
neurons. Your brain filters through the broad range of sensory input in order for you to function as a creature in this third dimensional plane. And this is kind of incredible because when I'm looking at you, someone standing to my left could see somebody who's standing at my right. That is, the light could be going right across this way, the waves are going this way, the waves are going this way, the waves are going this way. It's just a complete network. Now, it's easy to think of them as arrows passing each other, but that's not the way it is because all it is is something shaking. It's called the electric field, but we don't have to bother with what it is. It's just like the water height is going up and down. So there's some quantities shaking about here. And in a combination of motions that's so elaborate and complicated that the net result is to produce an influence which I, makes me see you at the same time completely undisturbed by the fact that there are influences that represent the other guy seeing him on this side. So that there's this tremendous mess of waves all over in space which we call it, which is the light bouncing around the room and going from one thing to the other. If your brain actually allowed all the information to flow in, you wouldn't be able to survive in the wilderness. However, when using psychedelics, the brain's bandwidth of perception widens slightly, allowing more information to flow in, allowing the user to gain deeper insights into the nature of reality. Which is why our species gained higher intelligence to begin with, tens of thousands of years ago. It was primitive people using these substances which gave them insights that they would then try to describe based off of their cultural tongue and understanding of reality. All religions of the world stem from the usage of psychedelics. The talks of spirit worlds, angels and demons are the descriptions given by people who were witnessing things beyond their comprehension. In other words, these psychedelics are tools for gaining deeper insights into the fundamentals of reality. Our society, who has severed its connection to the Earth, who has been destroying the natural equilibrium of the planet, has also made an effort to eliminate the means to access these tools of consciousness, making them a federal offense. This will be a video for another time, but for now let's get back to the function of the brain. If the universe is multidimensional, what does that mean for consciousness and the brain? If the concept of a multidimensional reality is true, then it must apply to all matter, all that is fundamental to reality as we know it. Could consciousness itself be the artifact of a higher dimension? The spiritual traditions and religions of the world focus primarily on this topic, the talk of a soul, a life force that originates from a higher dimension and incarnates within the physical body, to then return to the source when the body dies. With this being the focus of all spiritual traditions and religions, which were all originated from psychedelic use, which opens the bandwidth of perception in the mind, could there be validity to the concepts of a soul? Of course, we can't take the religious texts literally. As I said, the people of the past were describing things based off of their cultural dialect and understanding, but we can, with a scientific mind, deduce their stories to the core and find out what their coded languages were describing. Unfortunately, and ironically, in this era of time of abundant knowledge and scientific wealth, we turned a blind eye to these tools of consciousness that may very well be the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. Let's put all the pieces together. Part 4. The Big Bang and the Source of Consciousness Spirituality states that we are all one consciousness, one soul, one being, experiencing itself subjectively through every manifestation of creation, every living thing, every planet, and every star. Science states that all matter expanded from a single point, Every atom in the universe, including the atoms that make up you, originated from that single point. Were all the dimensions also created from the Big Bang, or was the Big Bang occupying all the dimensions? It is even stated that all known physics end as you draw closer to the singularity of the Big Bang, similarly to how all known physics end as you draw closer to the singularity of a black hole. Could the universe be the result of a black hole between dimensions? Could black holes act as a kind of conjunction for space-time? In other words, is this universe part of the evolutionary process of the manifestation of reality? The answer is far too complex for our standard bandwidth of perception. However, perhaps by widening that bandwidth, we would be better able to understand what the data suggests. In other words, if modern-day science combined forces with the ancient psychedelic traditions, we would transcend as a species. I believe that the stigma regarding psychedelics has stunted our progress as a species, preventing us from fully rediscovering ourselves. When I say we, I do not mean we as in humans, I mean we as the universe. 
If all known physics come to an end near the singularity of a black hole or the singularity of a Big Bang, this could mean that the laws of the universe are evolutionary and are only attributed to this 3D reality of length, width, and height confined within the linear motion of time. Our senses were designed to navigate through the three dimensions specifically. Our brain filters excess information that does not attribute to the third dimension. Our left hemisphere is designed to take that enormous collage of the present moment and start picking out details, details. It then categorizes and organizes all that information, associates it with everything in the past we've ever learned, and projects into the future all of our possibilities. And this is the portion of my brain that I lost on the morning of my stroke. And it was as though my consciousness had shifted away from my normal perception of reality, where I'm the person on the machine having the experience, to some esoteric space where I'm witnessing myself having this experience. And I'm standing in my bathroom getting ready to step into the shower and I could actually hear the dialogue inside of my body. I heard a little voice saying, okay, you muscles, you got to contract and you muscles, you relax. And, and then I lost my balance and I'm propped up against the, the wall. And I looked down at my arm and I realized that I can no longer define the boundaries of my body. I can't define where I begin and where I am, because the atoms and the molecules of my arm blended with the atoms and molecules of the wall. And all I could detect was this energy, energy. And I'm asking myself, what is wrong with me? What is going on? And in that moment, my brain chatter, my left hemisphere brain chatter went totally silent. Just like someone took a remote control and pushed the mute button, total silence. And at first I was shocked to find myself inside of a silent mind. But then I was immediately captivated by the magnificence of the energy around me. And because I could no longer identify the boundaries of my body, I felt enormous and expansive. I felt at one with all the energy that was, and it was beautiful there. And then all of a sudden, my left hemisphere comes back online and it says to me, hey, we got a problem, we got a problem, we got to get some help. What Jill Taylor is describing is the brain's information filtration system. As it shuts down during her stroke, an influx of information flows into her mind. She describes not being able to differentiate the atoms of her arm to the atoms of the air around her. This is what I'm trying to say. If we were able to perceive the true nature of reality, we would not be able to function as a normal human being. Our brain is hardwired to perceive what is useful for the preservation of the body. In other words, anything to do with survival. The brain is a machine of consciousness, but not the generator. It is a transceiver receiving the signal that is consciousness and projecting it into the world through the ego. Ego meaning our identity of self. Remember, if all subatomic particles in the universe exist in more than one dimension, but occupy the same place of space-time, then hypothetically, whatever consciousness is also exists in more than one dimension. Which means that the beginning and the end of the universe has already happened from another perspective, and that we are currently going through the motions from the perspective of a physical entity confined in a linear motion of time within the third dimension. Meaning our perspective is the experience of a moment within cosmic time. Ergo, the fundamentals of the universe are all the bits that originated from that singularity, and that singularity is the result of multidimensional happenings. These images, showcasing the positions of all known galaxies held together by dark matter, is eerily similar to an image of a neural network in the brain. Is this further evidence to suggest that the universe is a living fractal entity? Fractal meaning infinite, and that we are a part of the infinity? Given the fact that we are made up of billions of billions of cells, and that each cell is made up of billions of atoms, and so on and so forth. If the Big Bang was truly a random event, why would natural laws exist, and why would these laws encourage the formations of self-similarity, order out of chaos, as above, so below? So the idea of an omnipresent god may be translated to an omnipresent life force that is intimately associated with the multidimensional formations of existence, and we as humans are able to translate the vast complexities of the universe into formulas of physics and the arts of religious scriptures. Different perspectives of the same thing. Thank you for watching. To dive further into this topic, I highly recommend reading Serpent in the Sky by John Anthony West.
who brilliantly synthesizes the works of many great minds pertaining to ancient Egypt and ancient cosmology. Also, check out Geocosmic Rex, Randall Carlson's YouTube channel. He does lectures about cosmology as well, and brilliantly dissects the ancient myths and religions of the world. And finally, Laird Scranton, who showcases that the Dogen tribe in Africa are descendants from a sect of ancient Egyptians. 